Welcome to Electron Online. Our next example is a critically damped example. A critically damped example means that the alpha equals the omega sub naught so that the radical goes to zero. It's actually the easier of the cases. So we're going to use this equation right here, which is the general solution to a critically damped situation where we have a uh, RCL circuit which is source free and the components are parallel to one another. So let's write down the equation. So we can say that the voltage as a function of time is equal to A sub 1 plus A sub 2 times T times E to the minus alpha T. All right, we're given the same conditions here. The initial condition, the voltage at time equals 0 is 5 volts. The initial current through the inductor is equal to 0. But now the resistance has gotten a little bit bigger because we need a big resistor to go from an overdamped case to a critically damped case. The inductor and the capacitor are still 1 Henry and 10 millifarads, and we're supposed to find the voltage as a function of time, which means in this case we're going to need to find A1 and A2. Of course, we also need to find the alpha. So, alpha is equal to, by definition, it's 1 over 2RC, which in this case is 1 over uh, one, uh, 2, 2 times 5 times 0 0.01, and let's see, what that's equal to, that would be 10, that's 1 over 0.1, that's equal to 10. And omega sub naught was equal to 1 over the square root of LC, which is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 times 0 0.01. And just like in the last example, that's also equal to 10. And notice that alpha is equal to omega sub naught, and so therefore we realize we're dealing with a critically damped case. We could also have found that by saying that L is equal to 4 times R squared times C. So in this case, that 4 times 5 squared times 0 0.01. And notice that 25 times 4, which is 100, times 0 0.01, which is equal to 1, which is equal to the value of the inductor. So both ways show us that, yes, indeed, we're dealing with a critically damped case. So now that we know alpha, we can plug that into our general equation. So know that the voltage as a function of time is equal to A1 plus A2 times T multiplied times E to the minus 10 times T. And now all we have left to do is to find A1 and A2. Well, let's find the voltage when time is equal to 0 is equal to 5. So we have V when time is equal to 0 is equal to 5. Now, that would be equal to, notice that this will go to 0, so all we have left is A1 times e to the 0, which is equal to A1, which means that right away we already found the value for A1. Now we need to find the value for A2. For that, we need to take the derivative of that function. So let's do that. So dv dt is equal to, well, let's see here, we have a product. So it's the first, A1 plus a2 times t times the derivative of the second, which will be minus 10 times e to the minus 10t, plus the second e to the minus 10t times the derivative of the first, that's a constant that goes to zero, so it'll simply be times a2. Now we realize that the initial condition tells us that the dv dt, dv when, v is equal to, when time is equal to zero, dt is equal to the negative of v initial plus i initial times r over rc. So with the new values, let's calculate what that should be equal to. So this is equal to minus v initial, which is five, plus i initial, which is zero, divided by r, which is five, times c, which is 0 0.01. The fives cancel out, this is 0 0.01, goes to the numerator, becomes minus 100. So we now know that the initial condition tells us that dv dt when time equals 0 is equal to negative 100. Well, that goes in here. So dv when v is equal to 0, dt is equal to negative 100. Now we plug in a 0 for every t that we have, so we get a 0 in here. So this is equal to negative 10. A1 uh, times e to the 0 plus e to the 0, e to the 0 times 
A2. All right, we already know what A1 is. A1 is equal to 5. So we get minus 100 equals minus, uh, let's see, positive 5 times minus 10, which is minus 50, times 8 or plus A2. Not times, but plus A2. Which means that A2 is equal to minus 100 plus 50, which is equal to minus 50. All right, so now we have both A1, which is 5, and A2, which is minus 50. We can now plug it into our equation. And now we can say that voltage as a function of time is equal to, going back over here, which is A1, which is 5, plus A2, which is a minus 50. So this becomes a minus, minus 50t multiplied times e to the minus 10t. And there is the equation for the voltage across the capacitor, which is the same as the voltage across the inductor or the voltage across the resistor, as a function of time, which is 5 minus 50t e to the minus 10t. Let me quickly check to see if I got that right. Oh, I guess I should like this. So this is minus 100. This minus 100. Yep, it looks minus 50. Yeah, that looks correct. And so that's it. This is how that's done. Let me check, make sure I got it right. Nope, I got something different here. So let me check something. Let me check something. Oh no, I got it right. Got it right. I made a mistake in my notes, but this is minus 50. Yep, 